Okay, here is the uh, shortened uh, dipole antenna for 80 meters uh, that I built for our NVIS uh, testing. So uh, what it is, is it's an electrically shortened dipole. And so um, you'll see on, uh, here's the loading coil here. And this is uh, about two and a quarter inches uh, diameter um, piece of PVC, just a junk piece, obviously with a really rough cut. And I've wrapped around here uh, 28 wraps to give me the, uh, the coil uh, inductance that I need. And then uh, on one side, I have uh, uh, three foot, six inches of wire. And the other side, it's a little bit less than 20 feet. I'll get an exact measurement and post that. And uh, this is based on a design from the uh, K7MEM, Kilo 7 Mike, Echo Mike website he has a bunch of different antenna designs and this one is based on his uh called a short dipole on his uh, antenna uh, first antenna page and so it's a shortened dipole electrically shortened and so the uh the short very short ends of the wire the three foot six ends are going to go into this terminal post bnc so one's going to go into the positive the other one into the negative or uh you know of the antenna and then they both um, you know, go out to rope or whatever. And um, this is, I, I installed this um, temporarily at home and had it about six feet off the ground at the highest point and maybe uh, two and a half or three feet at the lowest point. So the highest point was, uh, for me, was this uh, terminal post and lowest point were the far ends where it was uh, just two or three feet off the ground. And the wire I used was um, this spool of wire that you can get um i got it off amazon and this is 300 feet uh, 20 gauge wire and i think it was around 30 dollars for 300 feet and so i've used very little of it to make this antenna and so this is absolutely a compromised antenna um, seeing as so much of the wire for the antenna is in the uh, these loading coils uh, but then again we don't need uh, a terribly efficient antenna and we don't need height on this antenna because we're looking for NVIS near vertical incident sky wave. So we're, we're planning to send pretty much all of the RF straight up and have it reflect back down off the ionosphere into our region for uh, local, local and regional communications. So this is, um, this is it. This is uh, what I built. And what I did is uh, I apparently didn't have a, didn't have a saw uh, that was very sharp, but I cut these, uh, these tubes and then I drilled a couple holes. You can see, I'll show you on this side, a couple holes there. So I fed the wire through a couple times, go in the hole and back out. And it kind of acts as a, a strain relief there and wrap the uh, 28 wraps and then did the same thing on the other end. And then I uh, just put electrical tape over it. Now this is not a considered a permanent antenna setup. Um, you know, it it kind of reflects on you know why how I built it. This wouldn't last long term outdoors, but then also at four to six feet off the ground, it's not really going to be an ideal antenna to keep up in the backyard anyway. Uh, if you plan on having anyone in the backyard or, you know, even deer or, or dogs. Uh, so this is just meant to be put up for a few hours or a few days and used, taken back down. It's very portable. It all fits in one, um, one of these Ziploc bags. And uh, it works well. This is, uh, I was running this at 100 watts and there wasn't any issue. Um, now, one to one ballon would be a good idea to keep any, uh, any stray RF off of the coax. You can do uh, just a simple uh, several loops of coax uh, close to this feed point, and that can act as, as a choke, as an RF choke. Um, or you can uh, actually add a one to, uh, one, -to one ballon on there. Uh, but I'll go ahead and uh, and cut, and then I'll um, I'll put this antenna up, and I'll show you it. You know, actually in the air, you know, a few feet in the air, and then I'll show you uh, the results that I'm getting off of that. And I'll also include the measurements for these longer uh, sections of wire. Okay, the antenna is up, and as you can see, it's only mm, two and a half feet off the ground at the feed point right there. You can see that. And on uh, the positive end of the dipole, um, at the top, at the highest point, it probably goes up to six and a half feet. 
uh, right up by that uh, aluminum pole there. And then the other end still stays around three feet over to that chair. And so this is the whole antenna and it is not high up. Um, it's very low to the ground and I have uh, quite a bit of coax uh, to get out to this point. Hopefully you can hear me with the wind here. But this is it. This is uh, the whole NVIS antenna. As you can see, I can string it to whatever, a branch. Um, it doesn't matter, a chair, a stick. And uh, it works. So I'll show you uh, inside uh, where the resonance is. All right, please forgive the clutter here. But the antenna is up. And uh, I'm going to show you. It's a resonant a little lower than it was the last time I, uh, I installed it. But I put it in a different part of the yard. So uh, let me give you a little example. Uh, this is SWR. I'm running um, no tuner on the radio. And also, I'm running through this tuner, but uh, just to direct without going through uh, any of the actual tuner itself. And so you can see, I'm in AM. SWR is very low. N0 is that IB testing. Now if I go all the way down to the bottom of the band. Well, if I go further down, way high. And if I go up towards the top, oh, I don't want to go out of band. Again, way high. So this is a very high Q antenna. So you know, what that means is that its resonance point, uh, as you start to stray from it, uh, the SWR goes up quickly. So it's resonant, but only in a very specific area. And that's in due to partly because uh, we're so close to the ground. There's a lot of ground interaction, but then primarily because of those loading coils. And so um, we have a lot of inductance going on there. And that's um, one of the reasons why this is such a, a high Q antenna, which it can still be fine. It just requires a little tuning. And um, if you if you know where you're going to put it up, tune it for that specific area and uh, you should be in good shape. It looks like uh, my internal tuner can probably handle the whole band. Just about the whole band. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't really like it right there. But let's go down a little bit. Okay, well, apparently I'm a liar. There we go. So it'll tune there, and then uh, I would imagine it's going to tune the bottom of the band also uh, because the uh, reflective power wasn't quite so high over there. Uh, but that's it. It's uh, working, and I'll show you the uh, graph on the uh, Nano VNA. All right, here's a graph on the Nano VNA of this uh, NVIS antenna, and you can see the, uh, the big dip here. That is at... about 3.85 uh, megahertz. That is the resonant point right in there uh, is 1.21 to 1 SWR. And you can see how it climbs on either side of that point. It climbs quite a bit. And uh, let me also scroll out here or zoom out, I guess. Let's stop it at um, 15 megahertz. See, it has some other resonance uh, or areas where it's a little better uh, than others, but you can see the actual point where it, uh, the primary point uh, on this antenna, the resonance point is uh, 3.85, um, uh, which is what we want. And so that's uh, the antennas functioning as we intended. Uh, so now that the project is finished and I've tried it out and it works, uh, there are a couple things I would probably do differently. Like the um, the uh, core material for this, this uh, two and I think it's two and three eighths uh, PV, uh, outside diameter PVC. I would try to go with with something thinner. This uh, this is not all that thick, but uh, it does does seem to weigh down the wire quite a bit and put some extra stress on this twenty gauge wire. Um, so there's that. I would probably um, build one a little bit longer. I think this is somewhere around 42 feet, um, 
42, 43 feet overall. And that is pretty compromised, uh, a pretty compromised antenna uh, design. So I think I would uh, probably increase uh, the the length of the antenna. If I could go to 60 feet overall, I think that'd be a big improvement. And still keeping it low and temporary would be nice. Uh, we're going to try it out. A couple of member, uh, club members and I are going to be getting on the air uh, later this afternoon and, and uh, trying out some NVIS comm. So we'll see. I'll put this antenna back up and see how it goes. Um, I don't know. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, let's see. The the design on W7MEM, a design calculator where you can enter uh, you can enter the frequency that you'd like the antenna to be resonant and then how much space you have available, uh, overall space for the antenna, and it'll calculate, give you a couple different options for, for builds. And so this one, if I calculate, for this antenna I calculated, I had 44 feet available. And um, that also I uh, wanted to be resonant around 3.9 megahertz. And it came up with this uh, this design of, you know, from the uh, the center, uh, the NC terminal post going three foot six out each way uh, to the loading coils that were going to be 39 uh, micro Henry. And then uh, out another, well, the way I measured it was different, but about another um, 18 feet each way to the uh, end insulators. And so to uh, calculate how I would need to make this coil, uh, I had to go find an air coil uh, calculator, an air coil inductor calculator online. And there were several to choose from, but I'll throw up on the screen uh, what I ended up using. And, and it, it worked pretty well. Uh, you can type in uh, the uh, diameter <clears throat> of this um, coil material, the base material that you're using. And so 3.7, 2.375, so 2 and 3 eighths. And then uh, how long the uh, the uh, coil length in inches, which you, I guess you don't really know until you do it. But I typed in two inches and I got number uh, number of turns. I kind of was guessing around until I came up with about 18, 18.5. And I come up with an inductance, an estimated inductance of 37.3 micro Henry, which is pretty close to the 39 that's necessary that's uh, necessary in this design and then also this design is not um, intended as an nvis antenna so that changes some things also and so um with with this design i got uh, you know like you saw the resonance at uh, 3.85 megahertz and that's uh, with an inductor closer to 37 uh, micro henry and the ends were a little bit shorter they were about 17 foot eight inches on each end. And so I think a lot of that probably has to do with the, um, the NVIS setup that I used, you know, in the, in the install, the installation, uh, today that you saw, I was even lower to the ground than I was, um, last time I tested this antenna and it actually affected the resonance by, um, quite a bit and quite a bit. I wasn't at 3.9 anymore. I was at uh, 3.85. And that was with no adjustment to the antenna length. That was just height from the ground. So it does play quite a bit of a difference along with anything. Uh, ground conductivity uh, plays a di uh, difference too. I built a second one of these antennas uh, for a friend. And um, and his tuning has, has been quite a bit different than, than what I've experienced with this one. Uh, so ground conductivity can be um, play a big factor as well as uh, any structures around because you know, there's interaction and coupling that happen with any um, bigger structures. I'd imagine uh, bigger trees are, can be more of an issue along with anything that's metal or conductive nearby. So that's it. Uh, thanks for uh, sticking with me this long, and uh, hopefully you're able to build this. And it's, uh, it's definitely a fun little project.